Hi dear doers, when managing my inventory, there is something essential to keep in mind. Fruits. They are vital for any good inventory management process as they are used to control product manufacturing chains, product default location, or to help in rental management by generating automated product moves. At Stealthy Wood, we use them because they help us streamline processes and save time. With Roots, I can also add steps like quality control, after sales services, or supplier returns, which will help us keep track of our product's quality at each stage of their life cycle. There are many different ways to use and apply Roots, so I'll jump into Stealthy Woods database and have a look at all the different uses. All right, so here I am on my database. Now, the first thing we want to do is be sure we have multi Roots set up. So we're going to go to Inventory, Configuration, Settings, and on the Settings page, we're going to scroll down to nearly the bottom. Underneath the Warehouse section, we're going to activate multi-step Roots. All right, so since using, we will use multi-step routes, this also implies that we will use storage locations as well. So the system is automatically going to enable uh, this feature once you select multi-step routes, and that's good. We want to save both of them, which I have already done here. Now, of course, some companies also need to use several warehouses. So if you do take advantage of using several warehouses, you can activate the multi-warehouse option here from the settings underneath the warehouse section as well. But at Stealthy Wood, we only need to use one warehouse for now. So let's go ahead and look at it. So I'm going to go to Configuration, Warehouses. And I have my uh, one warehouse. Of course, if I'm using multiple warehouses, I will see all of my warehouses here. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and click on this and then click on Edit. So I can change my warehouse name if I would like to. And then below, we're actually going to be able to decide how we would like to receive and deliver goods for this specific warehouse. So I can do that in multiple steps if I would like to. For example, I can receive the goods and input and then add them to my stock. Or I can receive the goods and input, check the quality, then add to my stock. Um, so it depends on your business's needs. At Stealthy Wood, we keep it simple. We just uh, receive and deliver in one step. And of course you can change this up a bit as well. So if I wanna deliver goods in one step, I could still receive goods uh, in three steps. So that, again, that depends on your business's needs. But let's save this. And now we're actually gonna check out the routes that we have for this warehouse. So I'm gonna to go to this smart button here. Now, if you do have multiple warehouses and you have some routes that are specific to that warehouse, you will see the warehouse name uh, before the route as we do here. Stealthy Wood Inventory receive in one step. Okay, and you can also see the multi, uh, you can also see the company on the right. So if you're in a multi-company environment. So right now I have a few routes, but let's just look at one. We're going to look at the replenish on order route. Okay, I'm going to click on edit. So of course I have a company which I can select if I need to. Um, I have the name of the route and I can also say what it's applicable on. So I have some choices. I can choose product categories, products, warehouses, or even sales order lines. Um, as you can see, I have multiple selected here, products and sales order lines. So you do have that choice. And then below, we will be able to add our rules. So I'm not going to go into this in too much detail because I do cover it in another video. Be sure you check that out. But we are going to open up this rule that I have here. So we have the action. So we're going to pull from uh, our source locations so of warehouse stock. Um, we have our operation type here and then the destination location, which will be our partner or customer location. And then we even have our supply method. So you can choose take from stock, trigger another rule, or in this case, we say take from stock if unavailable, trigger another rule. So with our replenish on order items, we don't have any on hand. We would like uh, for the system to trigger um, the buy route. So I'm gonna keep this selected so that it will automatically generate an RFQ. So let's go ahead and save this and let's see that in action. I'm gonna go to the sales application and create a quotation. Okay, so I'm gonna create a quotation um, for Adrian. Okay, and then I'm gonna go ahead and add a product. So let's add some drawers. Okay, I'm going to just uh, sell one drawer to Adrian right now. Um, and then we're gonna save this and confirm. Now I wanna mention that on the product configuration, I do have both the replenish on order and the buy routes selected. Okay, and then when I confirm the sales order, a couple things are gonna happen. First of all, a delivery order is going to be generated automatically. So let's go ahead and select that. 
And then once we're on the delivery order, we're gonna see that we're waiting on another operation. So the system looked at the quantity that we had on hand for that product, which was zero. So it triggered the buy route and that generated an RFQ automatically. And that's what it's waiting on. We're waiting to receive that item. So let's go ahead and check out our RFQ. So if I go to purchase, I have an RFQ here. So I see that there are two sales orders related to this. So um, in this example, we're going to see more products than just um, the product that my customer ordered. Now, um, in this example, the request for quotation does contain the other products because they have the same roots and rules as the drawer that Adrian purchased. Okay, um, so this is really convenient. It just combined everything into one RFQ since it does have the same vendor and uh, that just saves me some time, which is really cool. So let's go ahead and confirm this order. And since I receive in one step, we're gonna simply click on receive products and validate. So it's going to take the reserved quantity or in this case, the demand and mark that as the done quantity since I didn't manually um, specify the amount. And if we go back to our quotation or to our sales order, I should say, we can go to the delivery and we'll see that it is no longer waiting for anything. It's ready to be delivered and then we can validate. So basically that's how I can manage routes. And if needed, I can create um, as many as necessary with all the essential rules. So the possibilities are unlimited. That's all for this video. Thank you for watching. And if I don't see you, good afternoon, good evening, and good night.